In this video, we're going to compare two DIY budget stoves. First, the classic IKEA hobo stove and the vegetable steamer stove. If you're interested, keep watching. So this is another viewer suggested idea for comparing two stoves together. And I thought this was a great idea because each of these stoves can be made very inexpensively from readily available materials. In my case, I like to purchase them at Value Village, one of our thrift stores, but they can be purchased inexpensively from either a grocery store or from IKEA. So we're going to break this test down into two categories. First, we'll look at the stoves themselves. We'll look at their weight, their size, their bulk, their compactness when they're in your pack. And we'll also look at things like versatility. Then we'll go over to the performance of the stoves when we get fires going in them and we'll look at how long does it take for each of these stoves to bring two cups of water to a boil. We'll also look at how long it, the amount of wood lasts in a fire in each of these stoves. And I'm sure we'll find a few other things to talk about as well. Okay, let's get to opening these stoves up and taking a closer look at them. Okay, here are the two stoves in their stuff sacks in their compacted form the way I would carry them in my backpack. And on the surface, it would appear that the vegetable steamer stove is going to be a much more compact thing to put in your pack. But what you see right now really doesn't tell the whole story. Ben, I'll explain what I mean in a minute. So very quickly, let me just assemble the IKEA hobo stove. So here's my stove and inside here I also have the pot which the stove stores in quite nicely. So let's put the stove together very quickly. And lay the feet out. Okay, and this stove, I should turn it around so you can see, does have the cut feed port on the front of it as well. All right, let's just talk about the IKEA Hobo stove. I know it's appeared in a lot of the videos so far, but I just want to go over it very quickly. As far as cost goes, I'm giving the stove itself, including the pot in this case, a nominal figure of $5, because everything here, with the exception of the feet themselves, were all picked up second hand. So the cost to you will depend on what, it, what you can get your materials for, and if you have the tools that you can make one of these stoves. And I do have videos on my channel, if you're interested, on how to make an IKEA hobo stove. So the pot I'm using with this setup uh, is a 13 centimeter pot that I did pick up at the thrift store. And the reason I'm using this pot, well, two reasons. One, the stove fits down inside just nicely, but also the pot I'm going to be using with the other stove is a 13 centimeter wide pot. And it's important that I try to get pots of roughly the same or as close to the same size so that uh, it doesn't have too much of an impact on the boil time. So let's put that aside. Size and weight. Well, I'm going to put in the show notes below all the information as well as the size and everything else. But basically, the stove itself comes in at 325 grams and or 11.4 ounces. And the reason I mention stove by itself is because this is the way this one is built out. I often use them with different pots, so I didn't think it would be fair to include the pot in the weight. So 325 grams or 11.4 ounces. Bulk factor. Yes, they're a little bit bulkier than other stoves like the Emberlid or the Firebox and that they fold so flat. But if you range everything correctly, like I do with this one inside of my pot, I put my fire kit and other things down inside of the stove. So it takes up less and less space when you, the, the more efficiently you pack everything. All right, now, let's, and versatility. Let's talk about versatility for a second. Of course, a stove is most versatile when it can be used with other than wood by itself. So this can be used very well with an alcohol stove. And I have a video showing how to use an alcohol stove with the IKEA utensil strainer. But it can also be used with wood pellets and charcoal. And I have videos on those. It works very well with both of those. So that adds to the versatility of the stove. Not all stoves work well with either wood pellets or charcoal. This one does. Now let's put it aside. Okay, the vegetable steamer stove. Now, I'm going to be using a brand new one today. This was sent to me by one of my viewers. Thank you very much. They had uh, what appeared to be a, a rather nice quality vegetable steamer. So this one has not seen fire before, but it, uh, you know, it's identical in size and every to the one I have in my earlier videos. But the vegetable steamer stove in this case has fold-out legs. They don't all. Sometimes they just have little post legs. I like that this one does have those fold-out legs. Makes for a little bit more compact usage and it folds out now how are you going to use this stove i have a complete video maybe maybe two videos on using this uh, vegetable steamer as a wood stove but that's one of the things we need to talk about because it does impact the versatility 
To start with, the most basic way to use this as a stove is to have some type of a grill. I've got a trivet, and yes, I know this is probably a chrome-plated trivet, so it will release gases into the air. It's a good thing I'm using outdoors, all right? So, I like to put that right on top. You can open the stove up. Well, here's one thing you can do with this. You can open it up all the way and have almost like a little bonfire in your stove if you want to use it that way. And I'll show you how you can still use it like this and suspend a pot over it in a minute. The way I'm probably going to use it most often is to set it up like this. And this works out very nice for a stove. It has a huge surface area of fire so that it heats up a lot very quickly. But you can even narrow this in if you want and even focus the flame even more. And I have a little uh, modification that I did pick up from another viewer that shows how to uh, do this to create a modification. Or at least they showed something very similar. I have uh, uh, kind of put my own spin on it. So in its most basic fashion, this is how the stove is set up. I'll show you the alternative pot supports, pot suspensions in a second, but I want to talk about versatility. I have, don't believe I've used charcoal in one of these, but I have used wood pellets to great effect. Wood pellets work extremely well in this type of a stove. Uh, yeah, so, so do alcohol stoves. Now, they, you can't use them the same way you could use them inside of the IKEA. It's a lot more difficult to get the exact height adjustment with this for an alcohol stove. One way you could do it, of course, is if you could raise or lower the alcohol stove inside. Now, primarily I'm talking about a Trangier or one of its knockoffs. But uh, I think, in my, my opinion, is that this vegetable steamer works best as a windscreen. So if you're using a, an alcohol stove, something uh, one of the wick stoves like the uh, cat stove uh, or the tuna can stoves, those type of things where you can set the pot right down on top of it, because they're lowered uh, inside, you're going to get a windscreen effect and there's just enough air holes through all around the outside of the, the vegetable. The, uh, vegetable steamer that it will work well you know for airflow and for windscreen protection at the same time so yes you can it just gets a little bit more challenging to figure out how you're best going to do that with this this item all right I said I would show you a couple of other ways of using this put that grill aside here's the modification I created uh, and I'll explain why this is made from utility strapping or sometimes called plumber strapping for hanging pipes on the underside of joists in a house. I, I took a length of it. I have a little Chicago screw. It doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be utility strapping. This is just what I had to do this with. And I made it to the size where I could put it on the outside of the pot or outside of the vegetable steamer and that restricts it from opening up any further. Now why would you want to do that? I guess if you're worried that if you're going to set a pot on top of this and the thing is going to spread open on you, then this is a good idea. This will keep it from opening up any further. It just, you know, it totally restricts it. And that would be good if you have a grill or something that you want to put on top that doesn't have any means of preventing it from opening up further. There is an alternative method. There's another video. I don't know who has that video out, but I'm sure it can be found where the tabs on the underside can be bent a little bit and that also restricts it from opening up any further but then you're restricted to exactly that the, the, the amount that you've bent those tabs will restrict this I like the idea of being able to open it up all the way or close it down to almost as close as I can if, and something like this is, works just perfect so let's leave it like this position for a second here's an alternative method and I have used this with this stove this is one of those inexpensive Coglins grills that you can pick up for a few dollars. Uh, they don't last a long time, but they are effective. They do work well. They're easy to pack. And this Coglins grill will suspend a pot, or you can grill right over top of this, which makes it another multi-use item that you can carry in your pack. You can use grill right over an open fire, or you can set it up over a stove like this. I do have one other. I'm not sure it's going to fit in the video. I think I just will have to rearrange the camera and show you this other item, another way of suspending a pot over top of this stove. Now, what I did want to show you, and the way we're going to use it today, is with this grill on top, here's the pot that I'm going to be using. So this pot's appeared in at least one other video. It's just another one of the dollar store finds, or excuse me, a thrift store finds. I believe it was either a flour container or, or a sugar container. And I was able to put a wire bale on it, and it works quite well for an inexpensive pot that for testing like this, or for use in the woods as well. It's a good size. All right, now let me just rearrange the camera, and I'll show you how another means of suspending a pot over the vegetable steamer. All right, I'm trying to capture everything in frame just to show you what I have. So I'm going to take the grill off that I would normally use. 
So what I have is a very inexpensive collapsible tripod, cooking tripod. I saw this on eBay and I thought I'd give it a shot. It wasn't very expensive. I haven't done a review on this by itself. Uh, I have some mixed opinions on it now, but I'll share that in another video. Still, it does have some value, so I'll share that with you now. So it basically is, there are three legs and three sections for each leg that screw together and there's a small top plate in here that accepts all three legs. It has an, uh, an adjustable chain length here and that's how you use it with something like this. So if I had a fire in my little vegetable steamer, I could put the pot on, adjust the height to where I want it, we'll say right there, and there's a pin that goes through the links of the chain and holds it where you want to. It works. It works actually quite well for a pot of water. You won't be able to suspend a, a Dutch oven or anything too heavy from this because I find that it's a little bit shaky. The legs, you have to make sure that they stay together and they won't support a lot of weight. They start to bend a little bit because the construction is all aluminum. Uh, let me just share with you very quickly what I think of it. Compact, lightweight, convenient, saves cutting down and making or having sticks that you have to use. So if you're in a place where you can't find a few sticks to create a tripod, this works. It's not very high. You can't use it over a large fire. You could use it easy over a small fire or like I'm doing over a stove like this. Uh, it is made of aluminum. The threads, I think over time, if you're not careful, you run the risk of stripping them. So you do have to be cautious when you're putting together that uh, you don't cross thread and strip the threads. Um, anyway, yeah, that's pretty much what I would say in a review, but I'll probably show it in use over a fire at some point. Now let's get back to putting these two stoves together and creating fire. Okay, I have the two stoves set up on my cement block here in my backyard, my backyard laboratory. And I have the same amount of wood. I just want to speak to the wood and the layout of the wood in the two stoves for a second. I have set up the IKEA hobo stove in the way I do it with most of the tests. And that is everything is vertically aligned inside of the stove to create what will eventually look like a Swedish fire torch or Canadian candle. It's not truly a top bound burn because the fire lighter is going to drop down inside a little bit and kind of work from the center outwards and up at the same time. Uh, with most of the other stoves, I try to accomplish exactly the same thing. However, that would not work well with the vegetable steamer stove. So I've created a small log cabin. Same amount of wood, but a small log cabin. So once I get it lit, I'll be able to close this up around the fire. And it will contain it nicely and I think make the maximum use of the space in the design of this stove. Uh, is it truly a fair test and fair comparison? Probably not because I could probably get a few more sticks in the IKEA and I could certainly get a lot more wood inside of the vegetable steamer. But the idea here is to show you what it looks like with a fire in the same. You know, the wood is just one of those variables that I can control. And uh, so it, that's why I wanted to be able to use the same amount of wood, same type of wood in both of them. All right, enough talk. Let's get these fires started. So today I am using same as I've done in the number of tests. This is the very inexpensive, uh, I'm not even sure I got these, probably the dollar store, wax impregnated cardboard fiber type fire starters. They're great for doing these tests because, you know, they work. They work <laughs> for, the, for the cost and they work quite well. So let me get the IKEA one lit and drop down inside. It can be, there we go. It takes us, sometimes it takes a second to get them to light. I'll drop that down inside, let that start working. Sometimes I put wood chips on top of these, but I find, you know, it uh, might take a few seconds longer to go without the wood chips, but they go. And uh, I'm going to cut away while they start to engage anyway. Now the other one, I'm going to light it and I'm going to slide it into my uh, log cabin type arrangement here. Then I'll close the sides up around it. That seemed to work. Slide that into my log cabin. Close the sides up. And let's not forget to put the grills on before they get too hot to manage. Or the pot supports in this case. Okay, it'll take a few minutes before the fire in each of these stoves gets to a point where they're ready to put the pot on. And when that happens, I'll bring it back. Okay, it's been five minutes since I lit the fire starters, dropped them down the side. Both stoves appear to be ready for the water to be put on top. I'm, I'm noticing that the breeze is picking up in the backyard here, so I'm likely going to have to put the windscreen around. 
both of these stoves as I do the test. I am just waiting now before putting the windscreen up until I put the pots on because once I put the windscreen on a windscreen around it's likely going to make it harder for you to see what's happening but I'll reposition the camera then. So both of them are engaging really well. Don't forget the glove mark. This is hot. Two cups of water on top of the IKEA and two cups of water on top of the vegetable steamer. Now the vegetable steamer right away you can... Oh, there, let's start the timer before we talk, Mark. Come on, phone. Here we go. Start. All right, timer is started. So what I wanted to say was, the in, in this case, the IKEA has a more concentrated flame right to the bottom of the pot which is nice, you don't have a lot of flame coming out around that's not, uh, not directing its heat onto the pot. Not, this, not the same with the vegetable steamer, it has more open space around the pot, means great ventilation, but you're losing some of the heat around the sides of the pot. We'll see if it, uh, how much of an effect it has on it. My experience has been three minutes, four minutes max, and we'll have boiling water inside the IKEA. We'll see how long it takes to work inside of the Vegetable steamer. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to put the windscreen around it, folks. Okay, I'll bring it back when it comes to boiling time. Oh, yeah. The fire is hot today. Hard rolling boil in just three minutes, five seconds. Let's see if I can get over and check this other one without getting burnt. And it's rolling boil, too. All right. That's kind of interesting. Looks to be pretty much a tie in terms of how long it, brought, it took to bring water to a boil, two cups of water to a boil in each of these stoves. And uh, let's remove the pots, take a look at what's taking place inside. And after that, we'll wait to see how long the wood actually lasts. Take one pot off. Still quite a bit of wood in there, as you can see. Take the other pot off. Still quite a bit of wood in there as well. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, I will bring you back when these things have gone to the point of flame out, and we'll see how long that took. Okay, 16 minutes since I lit the two wood stoves. We have flame out in the vegetable steamer. We still have flame in the IKEA Hobo stove. It is starting to die down, but it's still active and it's still producing a lot of heat. Actually, both of them are producing a lot of heat. This would be a great time to grill some hot dogs or steaks or sausages or chicken or whatever, I guess, over top of the vegetable steamer. That's probably one of the versatility factors that it has over the IKEA is its grilling surface. It's got to be twice the the uh, surface area that you can put things on if that's the way you wanted to use it. All right, we'll wait a little while longer until these things are burnt down to a point where I can handle them, and then we'll have some closing comments. Okay, a few closing thoughts on the IKEA Hobo stove versus the vegetable steamer stove. Um, there's some interesting results there. Let's talk about the performance to begin with. So the performance was quite comparable. Both stoves brought two cups of water to a boil in just over three minutes. Three minutes, I think it was in five seconds. Uh, that's great performance. That's probably the fastest I've ever seen this, either of these stoves bring water to a boil. The wood burn out, the wood did burn out a little faster in the vegetable steamer stove, but not much faster than it did in the IKEA hobo stove. So that was kind of interesting. Let's see. There's an interesting thing that took place that I didn't expect to see, but I think I can explain it. I'm going to show you a close-up of the IKEA hobo stove, and hopefully you can see that. The aluminum pot stand that I created for this started to melt. Now, if you can refer back in the video to where just before I put the pots of water on, how hard the wind was blowing. I mean, not really hard, but hard enough that it was time to turn both of these stoves into small forges. There was an intense amount of heat coming out of them. And even after I put the windscreen on, there was a lot of heat being produced by these two stoves. That's probably, as I said, the hottest I've seen either one of these stoves burn. And it was due to the wind. It raises an interesting point about especially the IKEA stove. I did have a viewer talk to me or send me uh, some comments, I guess in one of the other videos, about how these are inefficient because of all the holes. There's too much airflow going through these. It does mean for a very quick burn, it does mean for a very hot burn, and maybe too hot. Uh, he talked about putting some strap or some uh, 
facing around the outside of the stove, restricting the number of holes that air can be drawn in. Do you know, I am going to do some experiments with that, and I thank you, and I don't recall your name right now, but I thank you for that because it's prompted me to do exactly that, to see what I can do to modify and slow the burn down a little bit on the IKEA Hobo stove. Uh, what else can I say? So, long-term durability, that's obviously an impact on the IKEA. Now, the stove itself is just fine. It has withstood the heat. I don't see any degradation of the stove itself, and I suspect it will continue to work. It's the pot stand that I'm going to have to change up for something different. All right, trying to balance the two of these as I bring this one up. The vegetable steamer stove, it worked performed beautifully. I was actually quite impressed. It's a little stiffer in the opening and the closing now than it was beforehand, but that's to be expected. That's not, I don't see any warping, no damage to the stove at all, so that's just a little bit of the soot that's got between the, the folding plates here. Uh, let's talk about performance in terms of versatility. I think in this case it's a, a matter of difference. What is it you're looking for? For a straight up boil, you can't beat the IKEA. This is the faster of the two stoves. It proved it, well, and actually it didn't prove that. It showed that the, the boil time was so very close together. Most of the time, this is a faster stove. This one, I can't get over how well it worked out today in terms of the boil time was pretty much identical to the IKEA. What this does have in terms of versatility is its ability to grill with more than twice the surface area you can do grilling, you can put a larger pot on and still get enough contact with the flame to, to that it doesn't extend over the sides like it might with the, the IKEA. So this actually showed itself very well. Now, if I didn't mention this earlier, and I think I failed to mention the weight of the vegetable steamer, so I will annotate that into the earlier part of the video if I haven't done so already. And uh, one of the things I mentioned about versatility, or failed to mention about versatility, inside its little stuff sack. This one did look more compact, but you have to remember it did not come with a pot included. So you're going to have to carry your pot separately. Well, that gives you the options of carrying all kinds of pots and using all kinds of uh, utensils, fry pans, whatever you want on this. I haven't tried a Dutch oven on this. I don't think that's what this is intended for. But, you know, just about anything else I think you can put on this and, and it'll work just fine. Uh, the other thing with versatility is you do have to have a pot stand, but I suppose this gives you the option of using different pot stands, such as the, the Coglin's grill or the uh, tripod, the aluminum tripod. Okay, I don't know what else to say. Cost-wise, they're both right on par, you know, next to nothing, depending on what you can find them for in a thrift store. Uh, Performance-wise, they seem to work very well, both of them. Um, I am just a little, I, I have to tell you, I'm a little disappointed with what I saw here with the aluminum. Maybe I should have expected that. I've not, just not had it happen before with these stoves. So now I'm on the hunt for something, for an alternative that can withstand higher heats. Okay, that's all I have to say about these two stoves. I open it up to you for your comments. What did you think of this test? What would you do differently? What other types of tests would you like to see? Put those in the comments section below. And of course, until I see you again, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.